Have you ever wanted a character that, you know, snipes enemies across the room like this? Or maybe has an overloaded active skill with a short cooldown that does this? And maybe you actually want to see even bigger numbers than this? Well, I'm here to tell you that the new 5 star forest Aurorian Lolly, her name Lola, fits the bill. First, let's take a look at her skills. Of course, the most important one will be attack because she's a sniper and she's going to be the DPS unit, right? So she has a, a 3212 attack stat, which is, you know, pretty good for a 5 star unit, right? So if we compare her with the other 5 star forest units, Arya and Kaskuda will have a slightly higher attack, but Lola will be third on the list of 5 stars, which is, you know, pretty standard, um, pretty right there in the middle, right? But if you compare it with the 6 star snipers like Migard, Paloma, uh, Mythos as well, she's obviously going to be lacking a lot of attack around like 600 uh, 500 to 600 attack so lola is in a difficult situation where you know there's really top tier sniper dps's uh, that will out damage her and their kit is you know quote unquote better but lola is a very very strong unit uh, free to play regardless and let me tell you why so let's take a look at her skills and let's also address the big elephant in the room, her equipment. It's worded pretty weirdly, it's pretty misleading, but uh, this is essentially what it means, right? During Aurora time, you get a 25% attack buff, right? And any chain combo you do after will be triggered regardless of the tile color. For example, you just triggered Aurora time, okay? and then you're going to run on a four tile red color, right? Lola's chain combo will activate. Uh, it will do 150% damage to two nearest enemies, uh, even though we just ran on a four tile red color. That's all it means. And the damage will not be fire, it will be considered force element. So she's going to be doing them as much damage as possible because she is a force unit and she's going to get that force element boost and whatever uh, counter element, for example, if you're hitting thunder, you're going to get that counter bonus as well. This is a very impressive equipment skill. Attack increased by 25% is nothing to scoff at, right? She has a 3200 attack base, 25% uh, of 3200, what is that, uh, quick maths? She's going to be gaining, what, 800 to 900 attack boost off her Aurora time? That's kind of crazy, 800 to 900, that brings her up to, an, to a uh, base attack of, you know, 4100, right? 4100 attack, that is pretty insane. So the strategy is when you pop the Aurora time, this is when you want to use your active skill. And so let's take a look at what actually her active skill does. It deals 750% damage to one selected enemy. If the enemy is still standing at the end of the round, the HP recovered is equal to the damage inflicted. So if you don't kill the enemy, they will recover how much damage you did basically. But if you entered Aurora time, uh, either before using the skill or use after the skill, the enemies will not recover HP. So that's a pretty, pretty fair trade-off. Um, because this snipe is a very, very strong snipe. It's 750% modifier with a pretty decent high base attack. And maybe if you pair it with Aurora time, that's basically a clean one-shot KO against uh, small mobs, small enemies, and potentially some very, very big uh, nuke damage on bosses, right? Another good thing about this skill is that it comes preemptive and the cooldown is only two rounds. So you can start sniping very, very uh, frequently and dish out a lot of damage. And now let's look at her chain combo. It deals 150% modifier for all three of her chain combos. So her four chain, her eight chain, her 12 chain, she's going to be dealing 150%. But the only difference is it's going to be two enemies for the first chain, three enemies for the second chain and then four enemies for her max chain, right? And so tying her up and tying her skill kit up, it seems like she's a really good farmer and she's really good for kind of single target enemies, right? Specifically the nidium uh, stage where you know you farm the gold nidium, right? Uh, you could basically snipe those dudes, kill them in one shot, and your chain combos has no restrictions um, in terms of area, 
same goes for any kind of end game content like the spire uh there's some floors where there's multiple enemies maybe they're like across the room and there's like a divider you can't pass a divider you need to teleport etc this girl lola she can snipe them from across the room uh, she's not really good in codex because codex is kind of just one boss and uh yeah i would not recommend using lola for large mobs with like four tiles or more and so codex is kind of out of the question she's also pretty good for the simulation stuff which we got recently um if you can find the simulation from the colossus right she'll be good against you know those chests that chess queen or whatever she kind of summons all those pawns and whatnot and so let's take a look at her breakthroughs so her breakthrough we should be able to get all of these breakthroughs uh, just because she's an event unit and you're gonna get her for free and you can buy all of her dupes basically and so the second uh, breakthrough active skill enhancement if the damage inflicts to the enemy has recovered active skill will be reduced by one round this is kind of whatever you only just want to use your active skill for uh, basically guaranteed kill or during your aurora time right so using this um, so getting this breakthrough is kind of uh, redundant because you're never going to you know attack an enemy who's going to heal afterwards right but her last one this is the juicy one her active skill is going to be increased by 150 percent modifier i don't even have this yet i'm still farming the event so from it goes from a 750 percent to what is it 900 percent modifier so all the numbers you saw on screen uh during my demo of her right She's only a level 15, um, and she doesn't even have max breakthroughs yet. So you saw at the end, there was like a 26k hit. Um, if we add on another 150% modifier, I'm pretty sure that's going to be 30k plus, right? So that's going to be super, super awesome. You definitely, definitely want to get her last breakthrough. And now, what kind of team can you put her into, right? So I mentioned that she's a good single target enemy. Uh, she's a good single target unit, and she's not really good for large mobs, right? But what happens if you bring in a team formation like this? Let me show you this team formation. Okay, this is the team I use in my demo. Okay, we're gonna have Hero as lead. Uh, she's just you know the best captain basically. And then if you notice, we're gonna have three snipers. Well, Sakari is a cross converter, but essentially I call her a sniper because her chain combo does the exact same thing as Lola's, right? It has a uh, no restriction AoE, so she's going to be sniping across the room, just like Lola. And if we pair three snipers together, this is going to wreak havoc on a lot of uh, floors or a lot of stages with multiple enemies. And so with the conclusion, should you invest in her? I would say yes, do invest in her, she is a great single target uh, unit. She's also free, but 100% I will be personally using her even though you guys saw my roster is pretty stacked, um, but Lola does fit the single target team, right? So I'll be testing her out and maybe posting some more videos in the future with her in uh, Spire or something like that, so stay tuned for that. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys and until next time.